So I really enjoy watching camera tutorials and camera reviews and tech tutorials and, you know, filmmaking tutorials and all those cinematic videos. And video production has been probably my biggest hobby over the past few years. And that's a thing that I feel like kind of gets like lost in all this is, you know, I think at a certain point when you get enough into stuff and practice it enough, like people are like, especially if you're older, like, you know, there's a line where a hobby has to become a form of profit or your profession or, you know, uh, people always feel like it can't just be a hobby, but like sometimes you just need that thing to just always have fun with and always enjoy, even if you don't know where you're going with it. So with that being said, I got something, it's the Epic 6, it's purely for my edutainment and it's a completely overkill camera for like YouTube content and for most things like, I mean, honestly, I could probably make the same quality videos with like the T3 I had years ago, but it's so fun to use and it's made like one of my hobbies, which is making YouTube videos, like even funner to do because of it. So in this review, well, it's not really a review, but we're going to talk about this camera and the stuff that it has and, you know, why it's making things fun. It's fun making videos again. So let's get into it. So I think there needs to be a little bit of context with this because it's like I didn't just get an FX6 on a whim. So basically, I've been making YouTube videos now for a few years. Like, well, I've made YouTube videos for a lot longer, over 10 years. But for the vast majority, it was gaming videos. And uh, a few years ago, my wife wanted a new point and shoot camera. So I got her a Canon a G7X Mark II. And I played with it a little bit before I gave it to her. And I was just like so interested with the video quality and stuff that I started making videos again with it. And then I wanted to improve my audio quality. And that evolved into getting, you know, a mirrorless camera and another mirrorless camera. And slowly I amassed all this different equipment and all of it was in the pursuit of improving production quality. So you know, now I needed phantom power for my microphone and then I wanted better color space or codecs that wouldn't explode my computer so I could edit them and get better color grading. That's another like rabbit hole to go down. And before I knew it, I had this like really complicated setup that was based around time code and syncing all these devices together, which I then basically had to take an audio file and a video file and sync them in post. And then I started noticing that the time code method I was using via HDMI was putting noise in the recordings and it just was taking a long time. I was spending more time linking everything together and less time creating stuff. So when I saw that pretty much the cinema camera did all these things at one, like the audio recorded into the camera, so no more syncing. I could preview LUTs and audio, so no more like, you know, guessing the exposure and making sure it's correct. And it had waveform monitors built in and it had so many little things that basically were packed into one. Whereas instead of being spread out through a bunch of stuff and sometimes it'd work or something would fail and it would take forever to set up. It was just like one complete package in one thing. So the first thing I want to mention is like two important things with audio. So the first thing is that, you know, there's built in audio into it. Now it's 24 bit audio, so it's not as crazy as those. 32-bit recorders where you can scream or be as quiet as you want and adjust it as much as you want. That crazy dynamic range. Also, it doesn't necessarily sound as good as standard recorders. Like the Mix Pre, I think, has better limiters and just cleaner mic sound, but most people won't be able to hear that. Uh, but it's just, it's nice. And it actually has another really cool feature, which is um, kind of a combination of features. So first it has like automatic gain control, so you can actually just set it to auto and it's pretty good at just setting what it needs to pick up from the microphones. But the other cool thing is that you can actually duplicate the first input into the second input. So this helps you create a safety track. So one, you can set your level manually, maybe a little bit lower than the automatic setting. And that way, when you listen to it in post, because I know it's one of my microphones, it gets really sensitive to like clicks and pops. 
Um, this helps basically save that because you have a safety track that wouldn't have that. So really just awesome audio options there. All right, so there's also a bunch of other really handy features on the camera. So one is that it has a built-in gyro. Now this is mainly used for giving metadata to Sony Catalyst when you need to basically stabilize the footage. But also it gives a little like level meter inside it. So you can see if it's level or not. So when you have a bunch of junk on the tripod, it can be hard to see if it's level or not, especially using the little meter on it. So this is really handy to do that. Another thing is the video routing. So you can output through HDMI or SDI and you can pick if you want your display to output to the secondary monitor or if you want the LUT to output or whatever. And this is really helpful because like I can have one monitor that shows my audio levels and one monitor that just shows me like the clean feed so I can check my exposure. So one thing that's really helpful is with exposure, right? So exposure is always kind of tricky because there's so many ways to do it like zebras and you know, waveform monitors and stuff. So I used to use the waveform monitor on the Ninja, but the problem was is that, you know, I'm supposed to hit an exact value, right? So if it's like middle grade, it's 41% or whatever. And I have to kind of like eyeball it on the waveform, like, is it 41, kinda, maybe, who knows? But on this one, whatever zebra value you set in the camera, it creates this big, huge yellow line in the waveform monitor saying like, hey, this is 41, this is 45, whatever. So it makes it so much easier to be able to like put the gray card up and then see that line on the waveform and then just shift it up and down and get the exposure right. And then, you know, being able to use the EI mode to like overexpose by one stops, two stops, and then see it reflected in the LUT. So much easier in making sure that you're getting your, your exposure right in camera. And it's so much easier to deal with. And the other thing too, is that it actually comes with a mobile app like so it's not just mobile, it's like a web page. And so you can like access it from your computer. But basically you connect your camera via Wi-Fi, you go into this app and then you can basically control the camera. I used to have to use like a remote on the A7S III, but you can actually adjust it too. You can adjust, you know, white balance and, you know, the shutter speed and start and stop recording. And you can see time code and it even gives you a preview of what your video looks like. It's so cool. But aside from that, like the little presets that you can have. So I can basically have presets for like white balance and stuff like that. So I can dial in my white balance for like my studio set and then have other white balances that I can use for like going outside and shooting different stuff. And so another benefit is that it actually comes with its own power source. So you can plug it in, it doubles as the charger too for the battery, but no more like using some sketchy dummy battery. It's, it's so nice, such a relief. And then there's the auto ND. Now I think everyone's covered the audio ND and what it does, but basically it's an ND filter, which basically means like if it's too bright, this will drop down the brightness, horrible description. But the auto ND is unique to Sony's where it like will automatically expose itself. So it's so cool and crazy to see the camera just do the work for you. And you can be lazy and just pointing around whatever you want. I mean, it's not a mind reader. I mean, you still have to do some auto adjustments for manual adjustments when you need to, but it makes filming outside so much easier, except for the fact that it's scorching hot outside in Singapore all the time. But hey, when we get to travel to cooler places, then it'll be pretty cool to like test this out and do more outside shots. I'm hyped to do more outside stuff. Here's some random dog footage. All right, so what's the drawbacks? Well, the drawbacks are being kind of nitpicky and I'm sure some people are like, what are you talking about? This is ridiculous. So the first thing is that it comes with like a built-in like microphone uh, holder and it's pretty much useless. Like you actually are supposed to buy like this official Sony spacer so your microphone can be held by it. But you made like a cheap DIY solution that seems to get the job done. Um, there's also just like the whole like kind of tier of pricing that you get dropped into like when you get this type of equipment like Batteries are so crazy expensive for these cameras. Like it's nuts. Uh, also like <laughs> you cannot really be too incognito with this camera. Like, I mean, I haven't had any problems in Singapore. No one's been like, hey, do you have a permit or something? Although we'll see when I explore more places. But I know, for example, like in the Philippines, a guard would be like, what the hell are you doing? Are you a film crew? Get out of here. Uh, there's also just like the kind of like what you're dealing with like there there's like this sense of anxiety that arises like you know i remember 
when I had like a $700 point and shoot, I thought it would, you know, suck to lose it and actually almost did get lost once. Now with this, like if this was gone, I don't know. I don't know what I'd do. I'd be pretty, pretty devastated and destroyed. Um, aside from that, the last thing is that the menu is pretty dense. Like there's so many options and things that you can do with this camera. Like I've only like just scratched the surface of the menu options. Like even just finding like the limiter for the microphone and stuff like that. I only happened because I was just kind of like obsessing over the manual for it. I was like, oh wow, it can actually limit stuff. Cause like I noticed some of my stuff was like clipping. I was like, all right, is there any way I can avoid that? Or I only learned about the whole like duplicating the first audio input into the second one to create like a safety track. Like I only found that just digging through the manual. Like there's so many different options and stuff like that. Like I think phase two of this camera will be like configuring my custom buttons. Also, you can only do slow-mo with S and Q mode, which means no audio, but I have other options for that. And to be fair, like slow-mo isn't something that I've really incorporated yet into the type of stuff that I make. So basically, yeah, like I, I really love using this camera. This has been like every time I've gone out to shoot with it, I've been like, wow, this is fun. Like shooting stuff is fun and thinking of things to do with it is fun. But is it really necessary for making YouTube videos? Not at all. It's a com it's a complete waste. It's a complete overkill. And I think it's important when you're picking up like a new skill or a new hobby that um, that you maybe pick something that's limited or, you know, obviously within your budget. Uh, because it's good to kind of learn through your limitations and be more creative because it. But hey, I'm getting old. I don't have time to be doing one of those crazy shoulder rigs and having 20 different accessories and then having to troubleshoot why one didn't work. I just want something to work and have fun so I can focus on whatever video I'm making. But I know this is a weird review, but you know, like I said, at the end of the day, this is a hobby. You're supposed to have fun with it and you know, whatever you can to distract yourself from the impending apocalypse out <laughs> happening outside every other day. It's really fun to use. And I know that there's other crazy people out there like me who are like, is this a good camera to use as my face cam for streaming? And the answer is yes, it 100% is. I mean, it has color grading basically built into the camera. Use it for your face cam, go nuts with it. Anyway, what are my plans with it? Um, I actually really, really want to have this set up to do interviews. I love doing interviews. That's probably like my favorite thing. I honestly don't enjoy being in the camera, but talking to people, interviewing them, getting their stories, getting to know about them. It's really fun. I actually did something for the Wild Rift event. It was super fun because I had complete creative control. So that's what I'm really focusing on with this hobby and this camera and this collection of gear that I've been accumulating just learning how to use it and then going out and creating stuff that I own and I control with it and having fun with it. But yep, I know this is a weird review. Give a thumbs up if it was interesting and subscribe if you have friends who you yourself have a bunch of doge coins to, you know, it's hit 10 cents, got to burn them, got to burn that money. Don't spend it on a Ferrari, spend it on camera stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.